praise the Lord. Um, today, I I want to have a conversation with my brethren, and I'm gonna be speaking about the fake Jesus. You know, before as a child growing up, I I was taught, and I grew up with that belief that Satan the devil is our greatest enemy I mean he's the most dangerous person on earth or whatever on earth so I was meant to believe that and uh, but I am humbled to say that Satan is far from being the most dangerous person he is far from being it he is not. <laughs> I just want to say this on a lighter note. It may interest you to note that Satan is not even as evil as we thought. <laughs> we taught him to be, to be honest. He may not be as evil. He's just that he's silly, he's stupid, and he's unintelligent. But he may not be as evil <clears throat> as we portrayed or we are meant to you know, see him. Now let me tell you what is more evil than the Satan, the devil, religion. Religion is the most destructive spirit that have destroyed a lot of us, a lot of believers. <clears throat> Excuse me. And I just want to have this as a conversation, but I'm going to back, back it up spiritually, scripturally rather, because we measure in our minor, in most cases, when we accuse the devil. Our biggest enemy is religion caused by man. We tend to blame the devil. I've seen a lot of men, men for instance, Excuse me, I have a, I have a little sore throat and stuff. I've seen a, uh, some men, for instance, some clergy. Let's just say men. Let it not be as if we are, you know, targeting clergy. When they cheat on their spouse, they don't own responsibility and say, I'm sorry I cheated. They'll say, oh, it's the devil. And you'll be wondering, what manner of devil? influence such person to cheat when they are caught che stealing is the devil we blame devil for everything but we are our worst enemies we are our worst problem now why did i say religion because we have used religion to bastardize a lot of things we have turned the scripture upside down. I remember in 2019 I traveled, I, I was a guest in a church in Uganda and I shared a revelation I got in 2016 or I believe in 2014 I shared that revelation with them for the first time with the brethren in the church. The church let me see DMI, I can't remember the, let me not uh, say it wrongly, but I believe it's CDMI. I don't remember the full meaning, but it's Christian discipleship something. It's a, it's a, a good church in Uganda. I shared with them the revelation that the Lord gave me about manipulation of the scripture, how some preachers will reverence those we believe are so-called fathers of faith will show their true identity when they try to manipulate and distort the scriptures. They will change it to suit them. Religiosity will reign supreme, but it showed me in that revelation, those people that call Jesus are not calling the Jesus me and you profess to as the Son of God, the Messiah, they are not worshipping the same Jesus. They are worshipping Bar Jesus. Fake Jesus. 
They are not worshipping Yeshua. They are not worshipping Yahweh. They are not worshipping Jehovah, Nisi, Jehovah, Jireh, the Almighty God. But I was asking the, the Spirit of the Lord, but these men perform miracles. They prophesy. They speak like accurate prophecies, revelations. And the Lord told me, <clears throat> you don't identify false prophets based on false messages. No. They are very eloquent. That's why we were told, examine our spirits. And he asked me, he reminded me what Paul the Apostle did. I was like, what did Paul do? He took me to the scriptures. In Acts of the Apostle, chapter 16, this was a clear revelation. I'm not trying to make up stories or exaggerate. I shared it with the brethren. It will happen. I told them what will happen. Because I went on a journey. I'm writing a book on that stuff. But let me leave that for another day. Because I still, when I remember the journey I went to, that is one thing that makes me to be too arrogant when it comes to sinning. Someone was asking me, what's the secret of you being faithful to your spouse? I said, because I feel so proud and arrogant to sin. I feel like when I see adultery or fornication, there is this ego in me that makes me believe that I am reducing myself to nothing to, to, to cheat against my spouse because of what I carry based on the revelation of God. So let me get back to the message. <clears throat> so he took me to Acts and he reminded me that in that same Acts of Apostles um, 16, when you read from verse 16 to 18, the Bible says there was a woman. This woman was acting on the spirit of divination. She was prophesying accurately. She was healing people accurately. But she was not of God. But she was prophesying accurately. She would tell people their story. Even when she saw Paul, the apostle, she identified Paul as a man of God. She said, this is a servant of the Most High God. And the Bible says that she kept doing this every day. Days, so she didn't do it the first day. The first day she did it, Paul acknowledged her, said, Hey, bless you, sister. The second day she did that, Paul said, Bless you, sister. What was she doing? She was seeking for validation. And the Lord told me, Most of the diviners are in my house and they have polluted my servants, they have corrupted the minds of my servants, going to them for validation. How? with mammon gift, with the spirit of mammon. My servant has been enticed. Now, when these so-called prophets go to real men of God, they know, they want validation, they will go with money and sow seed or pay tithes or give large offering that a man that is insensitive to the Holy Spirit will not be able to identify. But this woman did this to Paul. She knew Paul could not be bought, so she kept saying, this is a man of God. This is the Bible says, it came to pass that Paul was so grieved. The Bible, in, in, in verse 18, Paul was so grieved in his spirit that Paul rebuked the woman. Being sensitive to the Holy Spirit, Paul said, no, this can't be of God. This can't be of God. I have examined this woman. I have judged this woman with the word of God. This can't be of God. Now, how did Paul able to know that this could not be of God. I will tell you in part two of this message. Praise God. In part two of this conversation, let us reason together. I'm going to cut this um, segment so we can continue this conversation. And I'm going to continue on how did Paul identify this woman as false, operating under Div uh, spirit of divination even though she was giving accurate prophecies and healing 